Good morning, uh, Justice Peralta. Thank you for coming for the interview. We are complying with the constitutional process of nominating and selecting uh, the candidate, the nominee for Chief Justice. This is a constitutional process uh, exercised practically all over the world, including the United States. The first uh, to interview you is Judge Franklin de Monteverde, regular member representing the IBP. Thank you, Justice Tiham. Morning, Justice Peralta. Good morning, sir. Yeah. I was going over your records and uh, you are now six, seven years old. That's correct. And in two and a half years you will be retiring. Yes. Sir. Now, in that span of time, assuming that you will be appointed as the Chief Justice, what will be the future of the judiciary under your watch? I think it will be much uh, better, uh, uh, your, your Honor. How better will it be? Well, uh, I had some, I had some programs to be implemented for the next two and a half years. If you, I, I may be allowed, yeah. go ahead. I may be allowed to read them because I enumerated them. Then, uh, may I, may I, Your Honor? Go ahead, please. Number one, that uh, we will try to eliminate backlog in the Supreme Court and all other courts. We have to start from our home and lead by example. Introduce timelines of the, for the resolution of motions and other case incidents as we have done in the lower courts. Continue and improve the filtering system we are presently adapting or implementing in the Supreme Court. Automate court processes and incorporate court technology. Focus on skills-based training for judges and court personnel, like what we have been doing in continuous trial and criminal cases, also in small claim cases, like, likewise in plea bargaining cases, and also oral sentencing in plea bargaining cases and also in plea of guilty to the crime. Continue reading up misfits from the judiciary. Monitor performance in all courts. Improve procurement bidding because this has been the perennial problem, Your Honor, especially in those courts outside of Metro Manila. They will try to strengthen the office of the court administrator. We will implement the Judiciary Integrity Board, which we have already approved, and harmonize its functions to the functions of the office of the court administrator. Then continue to revise the, uh, the rules of court. Uh, your, your Honor. These are some of the projects, for me, which are the projects that should be implemented if I be given the chance to serve the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Your Honor. Thank you, Justice Peralta. Now, uh, in my years of practice as a judge, one of the reasons that we have had a backlog of cases was the uh, was the failure of uh, our criminal cases to go on regularly, meaning from Monday to Friday. In our province before, uh, we have a, a, a docket of criminal cases running to about 80 to 82 percent of the court. And uh, because of uh, lack of prosecutors and uh, foul lawyers. We only, instead of holding five uh, hearings a week, we only hear one, uh, one time. So uh, does your program include a dialogue between the, or among the, or between the Department of Justice and uh, in, in, fact, in, uh, in fact, Your Honor, there's not a program of this justice zone in the Supreme Court. It is a coordination between the three, three uh, branches of government, or two branches of government, the uh, office of the uh, secretary of the Department of Local Government to take care of policemen, of witnesses from the uh, National Police. We have also the secretary of the Department of Justice takes care of those 
prosecutors, and probably power lawyers also, and probably witnesses from the National Bureau investigation, and then the Supreme Court. Now, these are uh, problems that are now being addressed by the justice zone. And if you allow me, Your, 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 your Honor, probably if you have retired in 2011, I think, yeah, we implemented the continuous trial in 2017, no? Yeah. And if you look at the, uh, if you look at the book for the performance of the Supreme Court that we submitted to Congress for purposes of defending the budget, you will see there the improvement of the resolution of criminal cases. Uh, Justice Peralta, when I was president of the Philippine Judges Association, I brought this matter up before then Chief Justice Sereno. The, the delay in the hearing of criminal cases. And uh, true to form, in one of the sessions, in the one of the for, fora, she was able to bring out the problem. But from there on, nothing has been done yeah. about it. Yeah. So I hope that under your watch, you can uh, help us on this. If you allow me, Your Honor, just to answer your question yeah. and then to be precise with my answer. We implemented a continuous trial of criminal cases effective September 1 of 2017. And that program has been ongoing for the past two years. Now we have a data, if you allow me, because uh, this is a data that was submitted to the Congress to defend our budget. You will see there how we have been performing by reason of a continuous trial. In, in the data that I, I, will, I will discuss this afternoon on my Metropolitan Lecture, the data shows that 94% of the cases that, were, that underwent the continuous trial were decided within the 10-month period. And then, and then, in drug cases, because they have a different period, 40% of the cases were decided within 75 days. And then if you use the 10-month period for drug cases to be resolved, it would have been 86, 86.4%. Uh, right. So I, I, think, I think that is an effective tool for reducing the darkness of the court. One of the effective means of reducing yes, uh, yes, yes. the court. Of course, there are other tools, for example, uh, probably just to, inform, just to inform the body, we have also uh, developed the skills of judges in plea bargaining cases like in, in drug cases. The uh, drug cases that have been subjected to uh, plea bargaining is uh, as many as 31,000 cases. And for the information of the body, Your Honor, we have uh, 100,000 ca drug cases filed every year with only 1,040 RTC. So our judges have, have a really hard time, you know, of resolving all these cases. But we are trying our best. And the data will show that we have been performing well and then I think, I think our judges are now happier today than before because their docket has been reduced considerably, Your Honor. Thank you, Justice Peralta. Now, uh, since 2016, it was recorded that at least 35 lawyers, judges and prosecutors were killed in the line of duty. Yes, yes, sir. The Philippine Judges Association sought the creation of a martial system in the aftermath of these recorded killings. Yeah. And according to them, establishing special marshals under the supervision of the Supreme Court may help prevent further killings. That's correct. Do you think this is a good solution to the problem? That's that's a good uh, that's a excellent solution yeah, because uh, when one is uh, when one's uh, life is in danger, what we usually do is to go uh, seek help from the uh, police agencies, and the, the policemen are not under our control and supervision. And they have our own marshals. Then they will be reporting to us. We will have control and supervision supervision of them. Then uh, judges' uh, life will uh, be will be safer. But the problem, Your Honor, is this: no? Can the Supreme Court, uh, can the Supreme Court, uh, open positions for marshals without violating the rule that only Congress can 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 open or I mean can appoint or can uh, can create offices? That's why there was a there was a uh, proposal, and and I'm a privy to that. Mm -hmm. in the, during our budget hearing, I proposed then to the 
majority floor leader for two years ago, that if they could help us come up with a bill for the creation of marshals for the Supreme Court because of these too many debts and too many, too many debts, not only debts, but threats received by judges. And that was the problem that they, that they, that they posed. You will have problem of budgeting, you will have problem where we replace them, you will have problem of control and supervision. Judges are not used to uh, supervising uh, armed men and so on. So that's it. That's what uh, I think we, we, I think uh, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can again uh, propose for the creation and office, uh, office of the marshal, something like that under the Supreme Court. Your Honor. Thank you, Justice Peralta. During our interview for lower court judges, it was mentioned by some interviewees that there is a scarcity of stenographers serving in the lower courts and according to them, this largely contributed to the backlog of cases. Assuming that you will be appointed as Chief Justice, how will you address this problem in order to avoid the accumulation of more cases in the lower courts? That is really a serious problem, Your Honor, because some of our stenographers have been transferring to other offices. That, uh, I can recall that was one of the questions asked of me in a Senate hearing. Why do we have a lot of vacancies? And then I told them that we had problems with the stenographers because instead of having four stenographers in one court, we have only one or two. And they asked me, where are they now? Your stenographers are all, your stenographers, Your Honor, all came from the RTC of Manila. And true, mm -hmm. they were all there. Now, we are now presently employing contractual stenographers, Your Honor, to solve the problem in the meantime. But the real problem is that we have problem on compensation. I think they only received salary grade 14. Uh, that, that means mm -hmm. so not even, not even 20,000 basic pay. And you have the stenographers from the private firm, they may they had salaries of 40,000 also in the, in the Senate. So in the meantime, that we had problem on this, probably we continue, we have to continue hiring uh, contractual stenographers. Anyway, Your Honor, their work has been lightened in the first level courts. Because in the first level courts, all direct testimonies of witnesses are now in affidavit form. So they will no longer take down the testimony of the witnesses as, as they testify, because they will now be using affidavits instead of oral testimony. So what will be they taking, Your Honor, will be the cross-examination or the questions that may be propounded by the presiding judge. By the way, Your Honor, uh, during that hearing, one of the senators, chief of staff, came to me. And she said, through the, through the uh, chief of staff, I will sponsor a bill to exempt the judiciary from the coverage of the salary the standardization law. And I read the bill, Your Honor, it's not pending in the Senate. I hope that that bill, if that bill will be approved and all the, all the employees of the judiciary will be exempted from the standardization law, I think it would be easier to invite people from the private sector to join us, especially the stenographers. I hope that the JBC will be included in the exception. Okay, thank you. Now, this is a very important question. How will you address the public's continued perception of the Philippine judiciary as corrupt? Okay, Your Honor. This has been the problem because, uh, as we all know, perception is greater than reality. Mm. People tend to hear perception rather than the reality. The reality, Your Honor, is that there are only few who are misfits. Like in any other organization, there are always bad eggs. But the perception is that if one judge is corrupt, then everybody is corrupt. And that is a bad perception. And we have been telling everybody, we have been advertising, I mean, we have been publishing all those four personal judges who have been disciplined. And in other words, in your order, that's a bad perception, as I said. But the reality is, the judiciary is not, should not to be perceived as corrupt because there are only a few bad eggs. So what we can do probably your Honor is to, uh, I see, you know, the judiciary, among the old branches of government, the judiciary is the weakest. It's the weakest, Your Honor. The, I myself cannot go to the, to the media and have the interviewed and tell them that you have been doing. That's the problem with us. 
because uh, we are we are rated by or we are judged by the decisions that we write but we cannot go to the media and explain to the media they only use our public information officer but his but his voice is limited he cannot go beyond what we are what we have been doing because it might be a privilege it, it is it might be confidential in nature so what we can do probably is to continue inform the public what we have been doing with all of these misfits. And I think that will help to change that perception, Your Honor. Thank you. The orange light is on. I only have two more questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. How will you enhance the efficiency in dispensing speedy justice? In, in the lower courts or from the Supreme Court down to the... Your, your let's, uh, let's just concentrate on the lower courts. Yeah, lo lower courts, yes, Your Honor. I, I am proud to say that our lower courts have been, uh, have been performing very well. Your Honor. Before we revised the small guidelines in 2015, Your Honor, the average docket of first level courts was something like 1,000. There were, uh, there were also lower courts in Metro Manila where the dockets used to be 1,500. And then in 2017, when we implemented September 1st continuous trial, Your Honor, the dockets of the courts, first labor courts, went down. And you can check the record, one of the judges, or most of the judges now, had a docket in Metro Manila, because we use Metro Manila as the gate, because these are the courts that are heavily burdened. The dockets, Your Honor, is already, uh, the average is less than 100 in the first level court. In the second level court, we are trying our best, Your Honor, because in the second level court, the le second level courts are flooded with so many drug cases, and the first level courts have no jurisdiction in so far as drug cases are concerned. So all these cases are lumped with the RPC, but we are trying our best, because some of the social solutions, though, Your Honor, may be legislative in nature. So we are trying to adapt tools develop the skills of judges, tools like plea bargaining, develop the skills of judges, implement the continuous trial, and I'm proud to say also that this continuous trial and, and, uh, and uh, plea bargaining cases and other tools, Your Honor, have considerably reduced the dockets of the court. And if you may, I may be allowed, Your Honor, we are proposing, and I brought the idea to the end back, that we now, it's now time to amend BP-129 on the jurisdiction of the RTC because you remember, Your Honor, in so far as uh, a, a, a sum of money is concerned in the first level court, the jurisdictional amount is 300 pesos for those outside of Metro Manila and 400,000 pesos. These amounts were fixed in 1999 and the amount of, uh, of uh, in, in the recovery of possession or I mean the recovery of ownership except the red light is on. Okay. I'll have one question. Okay, Your Honor. What makes you say you are better qualified now than you were the last time you applied for the Chief Justice position? Now, for all these years, uh, Your Honor, even when I was in the private company, I always practice. I always practice this principle. I lead my example. I lead by example, Your Honor. And, and I believe that I have the qualities of a good leader. With the number of years that I've been with the Supreme Court and, uh, and, and as a trial judge, I think I'm better now to be a Chief Justice of the Vendichan. Thank you, Justice Peralta. Thank you, Your Honor. Justice Mendoza. Thank you very much, Judge de Montebert. Justice Tiha. Good morning, uh, Chief. <laughs> How, how, I address how, how, you as chief because when we were together in the court, uh, you were my, you were senior in the court. I have known you for many years, but professional ethics demand that I do not say anything to defend you or <laughs> highlight your accomplishments. To those people who do not know you up close and personal, who might have a different impression of your personality. Are you by nature an arrogant, <laughs> difficult, 
unapproachable person? And if so, are these endearing qualities of a good Chief Justice? Your, your Honor, please, I will, uh, I think uh, you were Justice uh, Mendoza and you were with me many times in the talk, in, during the deliberation. Uh, probably you will, be the, you will be the first to tell to everybody if I'm arrogant or not. Probably they misinterpret arrogance to passionate. I admit that I'm, I'm passionate in all the deliberations. And I'm passionate especially when judges are charged with serious offenses. And I always insist in all our deliberations that we have to impose the, the uh, severest penalty if the judge has committed a serious offense. In so far as <laughs> being arrogant also probably outside of the courtroom, Your Honor, it would be, it would be lifting myself, so to speak, if I say that probably I'm the most approachable justice in the Supreme Court. That's, uh, that's really what I am. That's really what I am, Your Honor. I, I will not ask you about the Adam and Eve question about addressing the problem of docket congestion because that has been asked repeatedly in all interviews before the JDC and uh, interesting and answers were given but up to now it seems that we cannot address really the matter of case congestion not unless we limit the number of cases that go up to mm -hmm. the Supreme Court or we change the mindset of the public yeah. that they should accept decisions which are correct and fair without waiting for it to reach the Supreme Court. So are there measures being undertaken so that like the U.S. Supreme Court there might be some cases which need not be elevated to the Supreme Court on certiorari and then the Supreme Court can decide which cases it should take cognizance of. Yeah. There was a time when we were consulted by the former Chief Justice. I think they were, you were not there. I was suggesting, Your Honor, that one justice from each of the three divisions, uh, on a rotation basis, will be tasked to filter all these cases before they are assigned or before they are raffled. But the problem, that suggestion that I had is that, but the Supreme Court, but the but the cases in the Supreme Court should be decided by the end bank or by division. That was, that was the problem. So my suggestion was not taken. So we had to continue with what I've been doing. But two or three, two or three sessions ago, the, when, the, when Justice Sardelesa came out with that case in Samar, where we had now to dismiss cases if there is a violation of hierarchy of court, I suggested likewise that we should uh, to include dismissal of cases based on due course because with rule 45 which is a discretionary appeal i'm sorry if the, if the answer is long because uh, for the understanding also of the public your honor we all know that if it is brought to the court on the rule 45 which is a discretionary appeal we use what we call uh, deny deny the petition on the ground that no reversible error that's what we have been doing for final time that if it is rule 65 then we say Despite no God, despite the uh, progress of this administration, we've been doing that. Now the problem, Your Honor, is that I had, uh, in fact, I brought this out. I said, with due respect to my colleagues, I said that if the, the petitions are original petitions before the court, and it is concurrent with the court of appeals, for example, writ of habeas data, writ of amparo, continuing mandamus, the uh, writ of calicasan, all these, all these uh, petitions are concurrent with the Court of Appeals. If, if the, uh, ju if the ju justice, uh, mem I mean the member in charge, establishes it, and it is not in accordance with form and substance, then we deny, we deny that to your course. That's, why, that's one of my suggestions. Because in the meantime, these are only the solutions. They are the solutions that we can, uh, we can, uh, it, it's, it's not the fault of the Supreme Court because the bottleneck really is in the Supreme Court yeah. because you take into consideration all cases coming from the lower courts. Yeah. Now my other question is, 
Are you aware of the judicial bureaucracy, the organization in the judiciary? You have something like almost 2,000 probably judges nationwide. The justice system will fail if judges misbehave and even lawyers who are under the supervision of the Supreme Court because lawyers are granted the privilege to practice law by the Supreme Court and there are about more than a uh, hundred thousand probably practicing lawyers already. The question is how do you monitor that lawyers do not misbehave how do you monitor that judges do not misbehave considering that you only have the office of the court administrator which office may be undermanned now i understand i i am fully aware that we assume that lawyers do not misbehave or judges do not misbehave if there is no complaint no, that's, what that's the only time we come into the picture so for example the ipp I don't think effectively police their own ranks. They investigate <laughs> lawyers if a complaint is filed against lawyers. In the same token, the Supreme Court does not monitor the performance of judges unless somebody Five complains. Points. And the only time the court administrator monitors is with so far as work output is concerned, fiscal accountability, and things like that. So how can you effectively yeah, okay. How can you effectively initiate reforms okay. if you do not monitor their performance? Well, uh, first one, Your Honor, we have really problems of uh, lack of personnel in the, uh, in the office of the court administrator. We have only 11 judicial supervisors conducting audits, probably around 2,500 courts now because we have created the family courts and also other courts, all with only nine uh, judicial officers. And that's correct. The Supreme Court will only act if a complaint is filed. But when I was interviewed the last time, Your Honor, I, I suggested that we now we can now apply the principle of res ipsa locator. That if there is no complainant and we see that the decision is really wrong, misapprehended the facts, misapplied the law, favor a party, a motion for inhibition must fall against him, he did not inhibit. I think even if there is no complainant, we can do that because we have been also doing in the past. In fact, in one of the cases that I wrote now, I said that this judge should be investigated on the principle of Serexio Lututor. I have been always, that I have been advocating that principle, Your Honor, because you cannot wait a party to file a complaint. In the meantime, that we are waiting for a complaint, eh, totally, totally, pare magni misbehave nung judge, like one judge in, in, in Panikitalak. Deciding cases of annual met, he was under suspension, Your Honor. That, that, uh, that's number one. But in so far as the lawyers are concerned, Your Honor, that's really a problem because we cannot, we do not have the uh, resources to monitor all the performance of all lawyers unless, unless of course, if the IDP will actively participate in policing their own ranks. Uh, he was justice. Felix Frankfurter refers to the Supreme Court as an institution where every justice is his, his own sovereign. They are independent, just like here in the Philippine Supreme Court. How can you effectively, promptly initiate reform if you have to go to the end bank and secure the approval of the majority? Oh, in, in all instances. That's what they've been doing in the, in the end bank sessions, Your Honor. If you have your opinion, then present your opinion, then defend your opinion. If they do not believe on your opinion, like, uh, like because of the practice of democracy, then let's, uh, let's vote. If your opinion is not, uh, is not accepted, the majority, then your opinion becomes dissenting in that case, opinion. And then you vote the, up the your reforms opinion. that you will initiate might be stymied or impeded only because you have to secure, you have to ensure collegiality within the court. Yeah, now, the presence of the 15 members of the bank, they are concentrated mainly on decision making, the way I look at it, but they do not monitor the performance of the judiciary. Is it, is it not about time that there should be a performance evaluation 
of all judges because at any rate the constitution speaks of judges yeah. shall continue in office during good behavior meaning to say they're not only intellectually competent emotionally competent mentally competent yeah. and efficient so the point is why not tap the philippine judicial academy and the jbc to conduct an annual performance evaluation of judges so that the Philja can take care can take care of the skills and the attitude of judges their technical knowledge of the law and the JBC can handle the mental competency of judges that is something which uh, no, you well, can that, 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 that's well taken your in fact one of my programs uh, if given the chance to serve is, uh, is to monitor the performance of judges. It, my experience in the Supreme Court is this, Your Honor. Probably, you know, with due respect to my colleagues, you know, probably, uh, probably I'm the most troubled justice of the Supreme Court now. Because I've been traveling for the past four years, lecturing on small claims, developing skills of judges. And when I see, for, when the judges just, just see me, Your Honor, their morale is high. And I communicate with them. I know, I know their problem. And I bring the court administrator and the deputy court administrator and then I asked I ask, I ask them to answer their queries. And there was a suggestion, I suggested then, Your Honor, that why should we, the justices of the Supreme Court, be divided into several groups? And let us see, we, we will, you will be assigned uh, places to, uh, no, to, uh, to, to oversee or supervise, so that we can see also how the judges are performing and also to boost their morale, because it's different if a member of the court is with them most of the time, Your Honor. Talking about your foreign travel, you've been to many places attending seminars, either as a participant to enhance your judicial training and experience and also lecturing in foreign countries. If appointed Chief Justice, will you still be doing the same thing and be an absentee Chief Justice? Uh, that's a good question, Your Honor. Modesty aside, Your Honor, all these years, I have not, uh, all these years, uh, there are times that I, not, I did not make use of my wellness, Your Honor. Because uh, people say I'm a workaholic. <laughs> but if given the chance to become a Chief Justice, Your Honor, I will still uh, see, see to it that I will have time to go around, around the Philippines and see the judges. But no longer on a regular basis, of course, Your Honor, because we have not to concern, we will now have more administrative work than judicial work. Talking about international convention seminars, making them available to judges, would you be willing to rationalize it? Should participation in, in foreign international conventions be limited to judges who are outstanding or to judges? Because if judges are outstanding, then they're already excellent. They don't need further training. So probably you should farm it out and give it to judges who have lesser training. That would, would you be, agree with yeah, that? That's that, that a good suggestion, Your Honor, but uh, in my case, my members of my committee have been helping me in all these endeavors, in the small claims, in the continuous trial, environment trial, and so on, Your Honor. I always make it a point to include them in, to include them in training programs abroad. About courthouses, halls of justice, is it about time that we should ask the LGUs to shoulder the expense of constructing halls of justice because at any rate the judiciary is serving the constituents and the LGUs. That, uh, I, I, hope, I, I hope you will agree me, with me, Your Honor. It's this year. Remember when we decided the case of DAP? If the DILG or the local government will spend for the building of the Supreme Court, there might be a question of cross-border transfer of funds, Your Honor. It is put up by a executive government and it is used by a different branch of government. A question may be raised that, may, that might be a cross-border transfer of funds, which we decided in that case of that is not allowed by the Constitution. Number two, you, you, number two Your Honor, my suggestion is that we, the Supreme Court should now form its own bidding committee. Kasi dito sa Supreme Court ad hoc eh. When you speak of hard hoc, we get the chief of the legal, chief of the FMBO, 
and then they become members of an ad hoc committee bidding. Why not put up a committee for that purpose? Kaya nung infrastructure projects may siya, nadidelay po eh. Yun ang suggest ko, put up an office. These uh, chiefs of other offices, I'm not saying that uh, they are honest. Of course, they are very honest. No? Of questionable integrity yan eh. But what do you expect from them? They have, they have also a lot of work to do. In the OPA, Raul Villanueva, Deputy Court Administrator, taking care of all the courts outside of Metro Manila and Luzon, being a member of the bidding committee. The chief of the... the Attorney's office, member of the bidding, all ad hoc. Eh. So, but why not put up a bidding committee for that purpose? So let's that they can also help the needs of the JDC. Now, let me go to some uh, high profile cases you decided. <laughs> you decided the case of Estipona, where the court struck down the provision in the drugs law which prohibits plea bargaining in drug cases and the court and I was a part of it I concurred in the your ponentia the that particular provision prohibiting plea bargaining in drug cases is unconstitutional but there is perception from some sectors in government that it sort of put a damper on the drug campaign cases because it stymied the effectivity of the drug operation. Yeah. I will, I will, I hope you will, I will be a longer answer, Your Honor. It's like this. We came up with a framework in plea bargaining after consultation with the Department of Justice through the Prosecutor General, the judges, the pedeia, the uh, policemen, all of these people were consulted on this framework. The possibility, what should be the subject matter of plea bargaining? The problem in our, the problem in our uh, second level course is that there are 100,000, uh, the data shows that there are 100,000 drug cases filed before the court. And 70% of these drug cases are cases involving Section 5, which is the sale or transport of delivery of dangerous drugs. 70%. And 90% of this 70%, Your Honor, are sale of less than one gram of dangerous drug or three sticks of marijuana. So we all agreed that we can enter into a plea. Because see, that, that's their problem in Section 5. They do not have problem on the other section, Section 5. So sabi nami, even in the Supreme Court, I think we were, you were in the Supreme Court, most of the cases that are brought to us, Your Honor, something go, since I stepped, uh, since I joined the court, there were only two cases, more than one gram or more than 10, 10 or 1 kilogram of marijuana that I handled. Most of the cases, pati kayo sa tingin ko, less than 1 gram. So we agreed that we will allow plea bargaining in Section 5 only when the subject matter of the plea bargaining is less than 1 gram. And in marijuana, when it is less than 10 grams. Yun lang yun eh. Ang problema, they have the perception that uh, kasi plea bargaining, yan si Peralta kasi, kaya marami na di-dismiss, yan ang sinasabi nila. E eh, akala nila, pati 1 kilo, pati 1 half kilo, e eh, kasama na yun, hindi po eh. Right. Less than 1 grab lang eh. My, my time is almost up. Yeah. Yeah. Last, yes, last two questions. You're also the ponente in that case, <laughs> and the good conduct, time allowance. <laughs> and uh, the court held that it can be applied retroactively. retroactively. Yeah, now, the, the ruling in the case of Estipona, can it be given retroactive effect as well? No, Your Honor, because uh, I, I, will, I will distinguish that, Your Honor. When you, speak, when you speak of a penalty, Your Honor, the law must be given retroactive effect because that is favorable to the accused. That's very clear under Article 22 of the Revised Penal Law. Unless if the offender is a habitual delinquent. Yeah, but the plea bargaining as well will affect No, no Your Honor. Plea bargaining is a procedural law. It has nothing to do with penalty. It is merely a procedure undertaken by the courts to address court delay. To tell, to tell you, Your Honor, in the United States of America, plea bargaining is the general rule. In all foreign jurisdictions, plea bargaining is the general rule rather than the exception. That's why we always ask, why is it that in the federal courts in, 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 in the United States of America, they have only a few cases? Because of effective plea bargaining, the first time that the judge will do when the case is brought to the court, they will say, 
you enter into plea bargaining. Right. Sakti ka na, the parties are forced to enter eh. Eh dito tayo, negative eh. All right, my, my last question, Your Honor, is two senators of the U.S. Senate hmm. filed the bill to ban people who participated in, in fostering the continued detention of Senator Laila de Lima. I distinctly remember that you and I participated in that decision. Can you make... Uh, well, well, of course, we denied the petition of the senator because of the violation of the hierarchy of courts. What is your comment on members of a foreign Congress commenting on decisions of Philippine courts? Well, uh, I think what, what, what I understand from the resolution is that all those responsible for jailing you know, or depriving uh, liberty to Senator De Lima will be banned from going. Are you, going, one, to, are you going to the U.S. sometime soon? That, that's the problem. Somebody from the Senate was asking me during a hearing of the budget last Monday that you are included there. I said, no problem with me. They've been the one inviting us to go to, to, go to the United States of America. It has been USAID that had been financing, undertaking our judicial programs through the Abaroli and the Asia Foundation. I do not know, I do not know why they came out with that resolution, Your Honor. And you know that they've been coming here. They are willing to help us. There is another uh, program that we are about to implement. The, I think you are aware of that, Your Honor. The special rules on admiralty cases for the information, for your information, because you are very much interested. The bank has already approved. Now here comes the U.S. Embassy coming to us again. They are now offering us to travel to America and observe the admiralty courts, how they resolve cases on admiralty cases. Okay. I don't know what's the, what I don't know what's the uh, thank you and the... good luck. Okay. Thank you also, Your Honor. Thank you very much, uh, Justice. Yes, uh, thank you, Justice Amendosa, uh, Chairperson of this uh, Council. Yes, good morning. Justice, good morning, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, when asked by Justice Satiyam regarding the perception, the alleged perception of the people here in the Supreme Court that you are, uh, even uh, in public, that uh, you are arrogant. Can you explain that you are not <laughs> arrogant, but rather you just speak with passion. Yeah, you are no, no. passionate. Yeah. Yeah. I think the best, uh, the best uh, witnesses would be my colleagues in the Supreme Court, Your Honor, past and present, how they size me up, or how they had been, the, they had been observing all these years, Your Honor. But as I said, uh, if, if somebody has committed something wrong, Your Honor, I'm passionate on that. Because uh, I cannot, I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, relax my position and then say, De, okay now, okay now, I cannot do that. Eh. Because all these years I came from the ranks, I know how, you know how judges work. And I know how people rate us when we were judges. Eh, kung ganun, sabi nila, arrogante daw ako. Eh, ang unang witnesses to all those people who approach me every morning. Every, when I arrive in the morning at 8 o'clock, Your Honor, you ask them well, how I treat them if I am arrogant. Nami misinterpret lang yun eh, Your Honor. Justice Mendoza can, can, can attest to what I've been saying because even, even Justice Noel, uh, Your Honor, we were together in 1994. We were appointed together at the same time. We were together in the, for more than eight years. Even Justice Mendoza. We were also together for, for eight years, and then we have been together in the Supreme Court. Now we are all again together. So I don't know why they get that, uh, that description of mine as, as arrogant. Ako nga, to tell you frankly, you're sobrang bait ko nga eh. Ang dami kong pinapautangan, hindi ko na nakakalimutan ko na all my employees. Eh. All their needs, Your Honor. You ask those uh, drivers who, who drive for me, saan yun ninyo? I come from abroad, all of them, maraming kasalubong yan. That's why I suffered this, uh, this, buti uh, tinanong na ninyo. I, I am now undergoing therapy because of a, uh, because of a uh, pulled calf muscle. It's very painful. I had to stay inside my hotel for three days. And you know why? Because the first thing that I did was to buy kasalubong to my staff, Your Honor. That's correct. Justice Mindless and Justice Ascona can attest. Yun bang arugan? <laughs> Eh, yes, uh, you're not arrogant to other people. How about how passionate are you with your wife and family? 
Sa tingko, Your Honor, eh, I'm a good father. <laughs> I'm a good father, I'm a good husband. Never in our lives, married life, Your Honor. Nag-away kami niya ng serious. <laughs> At saka, Your Honor, it's very, hard. it's very hard for a wife to issue a warrant of arrest against the husband. She's capable, eh. No. And how many children do you have uh, with uh, your wife? How many children? Uh, we, we have four, Your Honor. One, the eldest is just past the bar. I had twin, twin sons, uh, and then I had, I had my youngest, who so is only 16 years old, because I married late, Your Honor. Well, they always ask me, why is it that uh, your son is only 16 years old? So because, to be frank about it, I thought that I will not marry anymore because I was married to my job. And Justice Caldejo can attest to that also. Because he did, like, he did not like me to... Uh, anyway, that's another thing, you're on the private now, Shadow. <laughs> yes, I still remember but, that uh, when we interviewed the last time, that uh, you started late and uh, yeah. you had the first child when you were 39 years old. Yeah. Almost, almost, uh, just uh, almost uh, six days before I turned 37, you're on. And in all places, I met my wife inside the courtroom in Manila. All right, so Justice Peralta, if appointed, you will be the ex officio chairperson of the Judicial and Bar Council. How will you lead this council? Uh, Your Honor, uh, I will lead as the way I led the, the presi when I was presiding justice, and then I had the occasion to lead presiding justice of San Dignan Bayan. When I have also the occasion to lead the House of Representatives Electoral Tribunal as a chairman and the set, Your Honor. As I always say, I lead by example. Now, in so far as the workings of the JBC, I will observe collegiality. All the members shall have their own opinion that all opinions must be respected. Then we have to obey, since that is the role of the majority. Now, in order to improve the system, Your Honor, you are better than I. Because I come from a different, of the different world. I do not know your work here. But what I see from the JBT is that you are undermanned. I think that's the, that's the one that I can observe because I have that experience also. You have only one head of the uh, screening committee. I think there is one. There is no deputy. You have a torne capacity. She has no deputy. You have a lot of applicants. Sometimes hundreds of applicants interviewing all these applicants. I do not know where you get your energy interviewing all these applicants. I think that's the first one that we have to resolve if I will come here. And I will need your inputs because I said I come from a different world. What I can only say is that probably I will continue leading by example. We are also passionate. Imagine all of, all of us are over <laughs> about more than 70, 71, 70. Yeah, you're right. Well, uh, when you are getting older, you're older, you try to mellow down. Pag may mellow ka, pag tumatanda na eh. So, mas maganda yun. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts on your application process? The process here, you know, that you have undertaken, well, I, I, I hope you will understand our, our comments. The comments is that there are too many documents that we have to submit. Why is there a need to submit a police clearance or NBI clearance when you are already seeking justice? That's number one. Why do we have to, well, we have to come up with all these uh, requirements like, like decision and so on, output and so on, when they can be really, really, really accessed? from the, you know, from our data. Nandun naman lahat yun eh. So, ang sinasabi ko lang po, dapat sana isimplify yung process. If, a, if the vacancy is a chief justice, then isisimplify lang because we have been there here already for a long, long time. And I think that's what you did. And we are thankful for that. But it, it, it became a little bit late when we received that information. I have already prepared my, my applications at that time. But uh, we thank you for that, Your Honor. Now, to the applicants from the RTC going to the Court of Appeals, then probably we had also to, eh, to, ano, to uh, reduce the documentary requirement. Because I know that the screening committee will have a hard time if you have 100 applicants reviewing all these documents, Your Honor. There will be a delay in the, 
in the interview of all these of all these applicants. Kaya we thank you for simplifying the application of justices to the uh, to the position of the chief justice, Your Honor. Well, uh, we have improved the JVC website, and uh, we have also this online application scheduler. Yeah. Can you add any? I think this, uh, I, I, I program of the JVC now. Yeah, of course, you have to increase your. Are oh, you mean comments on the program of the JVC now, Your Honor? Yeah, of course, your website. Uh, I was there when it was introduced by by you and discussed by Justice Nolan. That's a good, uh, a good. In fact, my my proposal in all courts, all courts should now be automated because it has been effective in all e courts in Metro Manila. So. I appreciate the uh, the adoption of automation, opening up a website of the Judicial Bar Council instead of calling up, and then you can all read the website, and then you know what are the vacancies and what are the what are the deadlines. And I also up, 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 appreciate, uh, Your Honor, that in spite of your limited resources, limited resources, you were able to 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 achieve, no, achieve the objective of as much as possible. Uh, make the, the recommendation, the recommendation of uh, qualified applicants for the vacancies in the judiciary. Ang yun lang po, ang sabi ko nga, I think uh, kulang lang tayo ng kulang tayo po ng personnel eh. Sa tingin ko po, eh ang hirap kumuha po ng plantilya eh. Even, even in the Supreme Court, pag kumuha po may ng plantilya, you have to submit that to the DBM for approval eh. So everything will be automated, including presiding judges and presiding justices? Yes, yes, Your Honor. That, that's my proposal. For, for the information of the body, Your Honor, there are now uh, automated ports in Metro Manila. We now send e subpoena to government offices, to policemen. We now, uh, we, it's, in fact, we are now including in our rules on civil procedure and also in the rules on evidence that we will not be using E, 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 you know, e, e, e subpoena, no? And processes will all be through, uh, through internet or email. Talaga, dapat automated na lahat, Your Honor. And uh, how could you maximize technology and social media in the Supreme Court? May, may, I, may I may beg your indulgence, Your Honor? What's yes, uh, how could you maximize technology and social media in the Supreme Court? Maximize technology, Your Honor? Well, uh, in, 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 in disseminating what we have been doing, is, is, that, is that, you know that? Okay. Well, we can use, we can use uh, the public information office, Your Honor, through automation. You can send through social media what we have been doing. We can do that, Your Honor. And uh, can you describe your leadership style? How do you move or steer, uh, steer people in the direction you wish? Uh, in, 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 as a private person? Or, uh, it may be a private or a professional. Well, uh, it is, if, if it's in the, it in the judiciary, in the Supreme Court, uh, Your Honor, of course, you have to argue your position so that your position will be accepted by the others. You have to very well argue your position in order to convince the others. In my private, in my private capacity, Your Honor, eh, pag ako nagpukonvinci, eh, medyo you have to be cordial with the person you are talking to so that the other person will listen to you. Because if you are not cordial with the other person, then probably you cannot convince the person to be with you now. If, however, what is requested of you is something, something wrong or something illegal, immediately I tell, I tell him, or not, do not talk to me. I do not like that. That's what I, that's what I do. That's probably what they say. Probably yan pang sinasabi na arrogante ako po. Kasi pag may nagpapalap sa akin, yan ang hatang sinasabi ko. And they say, oh, you have a case with your wife. You talk to me. What do you think of me? If my wife is, uh, is, is strict, the husband is also strict. That's what I say. Kaya sa tingin ko, nangyemisinterpret nila the way, ano eh, the way I parry mga ganun na request. Well, kung yung, ano mo, let's say, Justice Dado, the have, have you read this case? Can you share it with me? I share it with them, you know. Can you deliver a lecture on this? 
Yes, why not? Pag ganun naman, approachable ako eh. Kung, kung arrogant po ako eh, I do not know how to deal with people, Your Honor. I could not have, I could not have accepted all the requests of Pilja to deliver lectures out of, out of reach ako sa family ko every two weeks per month all these years, four years na po. Sabi ng misis ko, huminto ka na. Sabi mo, lahat lahat. But I cannot say no eh. Tanon pa ako eh. Hindi ako, naku, mahirap ako mag hindi po. Kailan kong masama, ayun. That's a, eh, ay pare. Yun, marahil na may misinterpret nila. And uh, how do you gain the respect? Of others, Your Honor? Yes, That's please. A, well, uh, but all these years, Your Honor, as I said, I've been leading by example. I come to the office at 8 o'clock in the morning. But I do not tell my, 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 my staff to report at 8 o'clock. Nahiya na lang sila. Ganun yun eh. At paggawa ko ng top, supposed to, be, supposed to be distributed this Christmas, as early as Christmas, and the one who produces it, what is your best, best quotation that we will place? You know what I place there? Lead by example. That is the best, I think, you know, that, that should be, I think for me, that's the best thing that you can do if you want to, to lead people. You have to lead by example, Your Honor. What are your thoughts on judicial legislation? It is in relation to the case of Republic versus Vergara, March 20, 1997. <laughs> yeah, Your Honor, that, that's a good question, Your, Your Honor. There were, uh, just to give the example, we have to respect the work of the legislative, Your Honor, because of independent, uh, that's an independent branch of government. If the solution to the problem is through legislation, then so, it, that should be done, Your Honor. Because the legislative uh, branch of government has been respecting us also. That, uh, the, that in their laws, they see to it. That the provisions of the laws do not interfere the, with the rule-making power of the Supreme Court under the Constitution. And, Your Honor, please, if you read my decision in the cases of Rolando Corpus, and also the case of the, the cases of uh, Polinares when I wrote a dissenting opinion and the majority opinion in the case of people versus the Makuta and also in the cases of people versus Tulagan where, where I borrowed the words of Justice Tihan in the case of people versus Boy Tagalog because there is a problem on the penalty I wrote there that the only solution to this is through amendment in the law. That's how I respect the power of the Supreme Court, I mean, of the, of the uh, Congress in enacting laws, Your Honor. How about the case of Pomali versus JBC, July 25, 2017, uh, also was, in relation to the uh, judicial legislation? Uh, that was, uh, I cannot remember now, was the, the, I think the Ponente was Justice, Justice Mendoza, I think so. Is that the that does that refer the membership of the uh, whether it is uh, one for Congress and then one for for the Senate? That was not actually a legislation, Your Honor. It was an interpretation of the Constitution. Eh? Because we had the problems, we were confronted with a problem. Because why is it that in the you know, in in the Constitution, nakalagay dong kasi. I remember now, yeah, whether or not dalawa ang members, one should come from Congress and then one should come from the Senate. Eh, very clear sa Constitution eh. Verbalizes eh. One lang eh. But the practice kasi, when the law became, uh, when the JBC was constituted after the ratification of the 1987 Constitution, ang practice kasi dalawa agad eh. Kasi sabi nila, why is it in the executive? Meron isa. Di ba? Eh, yung, yung legislative, dalawa eh. May lower, may upper. Eh, bakit? Eh, isa lang. Dapat dalawa yan. But, you know, as early as the case of the case filed by the late, uh, uh, the late uh, Senate, I mean, uh, Solicitor General, Frank Chavez, irinasob na namin yan nun eh. Because, uh, because uh, Senator Chis Escudere was already saying that dapat dalawang member nun eh. So, we just, that's not a judicial, it's just plus an interpretation of the Constitution. Ang sabi kasi nila, well, anyway, to short the answer, yun na lang po. Arata, describe a situation where you and a colleague 
whom you relied upon for support were in conflict. Ah, you mean to say it's a friend, you have been together, <laughs> and then you've been supporting, and so mm. on, Your Honor. That's not true, Your Honor. And how did I you have, I have a friend, a very close friend, but we have also different positions in several cases. You have to be objective, Your Honor. Whether it's your friend or not, if you believe that you cannot join in, then uh, so be it. Uh, friendship, friendship ends when it comes to work, Your Honor. Ganon po tayo. Alam, they do know sila Justice Bambit in that case of in that case of uh, Bank of Commerce, he, 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 he dissented in my position. The, how do you convince someone to do something they do not want to do? Ah, if that is the case, you know, I will not convince him anymore. I do not want to quarrel with my, my friend. If he mm. says, I'm sorry, Justice Dado, I cannot support your position, then I will just say, I will respect. Hindi ko na itutuloy yun, mag-aaway lang po kami eh. I don't want to be quarreling. Eh. Sabi ko nga, sabi ko nga, Your Honor, sa tingin ko, ako nga, ako ang friendliest eh. I, I, I am the only one, probably, and many will attest, Your Honor, that during a heated argument, ako ang sumisingit to lighten the ano, eh, debates eh. Ako lang nakakapaggawa niyan eh. Because I want everybody to be friends eh. Pagkatapos na, dapat everybody is a friend eh. All right, the only last question that uh, I went around uh, asking people in the Supreme Court what will be their uh, observation if and when you're being appointed as a Chief Justice. There is really no, there's not uh, at least uh, questioning your integrity, competency, and independence. The only remarks that uh, you are from the locos, you may be stingy or tight one, <laughs> giving benefits to the yeah. place you know, of the Supreme Court. Uh, you know, you know what I told you the end bank last session, just yes, Tuesday, we have to be prudent in utilizing our funds, and we should when and then we should not take advantage of our fiscal autonomy. We will follow the law. I told them that the savings cannot be used for purposes other than personal services. If those, if, those, if those amounts are intended for personal services and all and the employees deserve, give to them. They deserve, they deserve. Iba ba yung, iba yung poripot po eh. Yung, yung poripot talaga, even if you have money, you do not want to spend. Hindi po ako ganun eh. Frugal po ako. I already learned a lot from my wife po kasi she's from Bulacan eh. Before probably, but not now, Your Honor. Naging prudent na lang. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. So, uh, Thank you for your own. Thank you also for giving me the and, chance. Uh, <laughs> good luck again. Thank you for. Thank you. Thank you for. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Judge Ilawa. Good morning, Justice. Uh, the questions I intended to ask were already covered by those. Uh, 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 questions of my colleagues. But I will just ask a few questions. Uh, this is most talked about by uh, uh, those in the judiciary, especially the justice and judges, trial court judges. This is with respect to the case of people versus Romilin. Yes, uh, there has been criticisms that uh, your decision in that case uh, uh, changed the per perception of uh, Section 21 uh, as, uh, an, as a provision on credibility or integrity of the evidence, but dismissibility. Can you clarify okay, yeah. us on that? I think I think uh, you are still in the in the court, Your Honor. There was a problem raised by the First Division at that time as to the applicability of Section 1 because that Section 1, 9165 provides that in the conduct of uh, drug operation, a member of uh, the media, or barangay, and, and a representative from the uh, DOJ shall attend or shall be present during. But that three requirements uh, the three, the three, the three, re three persons requirement was amended later on. Ginawa na lang dalawa. So, barangay chairman and media or representative dalawa na lang. 
And then the, the, the law provides uh, further that if they cannot comply with the presence of the two, then they will have to justify the absence. And they will have to follow the requirement in order to preserve the integrity of the specimen, which the specimen must be marked in the nearest police station, it must be photographed, and it must, it must, there must be inventory. Yun po ang requirement. Eh, no, nandun kami sa Supreme Court po. Parang conviction lahat yan, kinukonvict namin. And then there was an issue raised in the First Division, which was brought to the NBank. I think you remember that through the working chairperson then was former Chief Justice Teresa de Castro. Because there were now different opinions eh. Ang sabi nila, what if that is not followed and that is a substantive requirement? Eh, then you will acquit, sabi naman. Three of us, Your Honor, gave different opinion. My opinion is that, which was shared by Chief Justice Bersamin, we told them that there is, a un there is a constitutional infirmity on Section 21 because it refers to a chain of custody, which will eventually raise the issue of admissibility. Ayang sabi ko, yan issue na yan, eh, may constitutional infirmity yan eh, because it encroaches on the power of the court on rulemaking, kaya na natalo kami. Ang sabi natin na lang, we agree, okay, that's what we're going to do. We will not come up with the communist in the meantime because it will depend on the circumstances. So, ibabalik yan. Okay. Nung pumalik na yun, acquit na acquit, acquit na acquit. You know why there were so many acquittals? Because during the trial, yung poor public prosecutor na hindi na probably not aware of the importance of that procedure, hindi nila tinatanong sa polis. Why there were no why there were no barangay? Bakit walang ganito? Hindi tinatanong eh. In other words, they do not justify the absence which is of sexual So, ano ngayon? Akwit ng akwit. So, that case of mine, nadala ko dito. I wanted to protect and then save the cases of the prosecution. Dinala ko yan sa NBank. Ang sabi ko sa NBank, from here on, para hindi na magkamali ang mga police officers na yan, I-indicate na sa apidabit of arrest yung requirements sa apidabit of arrest. And because the, in, in continuous trial, that apidabit is now the direct testimony, iyon na ipipresenta. Lahat nandun na yung justification. It was for the purpose of building up cases so that if the apidabit of arrest is filed at wala yung provision na yan, then the court, the court may use rule, rule 112, section 5, that he will refuse the issuance of a warrant of arrest or a commitment order. It will be dismissed without prejudice. Pwede nga refile yun eh. That will not pause for that vital. Ang sinabi nila, and that is procedural, and therefore, nakalagay sa decision eh. Henceforth, in other words, prospective. Aba, ang ginawa na nila, yung may ibang judges, ginagawa nila ng acquittal na yan. Hindi. That lead is only for the purpose of piling. Henceforth, it's not a cause of acquittal. That's why I was shocked when people were saying, oh, yung decision mo, ginagawang acquittal. Ang sagot ko na lang, probably they do not know the rules. Yung rule 112, section 5, very clear. If there is no probable cause, dismiss the case without prejudice. And the judge should explain why he's dismissing it. And then if you comply the, with the rules, I-apidab dito pares mo, palitan mo na lang yan. E di ipal mo na, di mag-issue na ng commitment order or warrant of arrest. Commitment order, you tell the detention. Ay, hindi ko sa acquittal. The cause of acquittal is section 21, which is not complied with by the arresting officer. Now, you ask them now what had been happening in the courts. Cases are better filed now. And that also will help the, will help the accused. Eh. Because if the case is properly built up, yung evidence lahat, the accused can intelligently prepare before trial. Alam na niya kung anong sasagutin eh. That's number one. Number two, if during the trial there is an inconsistent statement, the affidavit of arrest will not be utilized to impeach the testimony of the witness based on inconsistent statements. That's the problem, Your Honor, when judges, they, not, they do not have these skills eh, to be confronted with this. Basta inaisip na lang, ah, gamitin na to, akit na akit. Mali! In fact, I instructed one of the judges there, you better recall your, you ano, you recall your order of dismissal. Why? Eh, nag-trial ka na eh. Eh, di meron ka ng probable cause. Nag-trial ka na eh. 
So why do you have to go back and have probable cause? You proceeded with the trial, then it is assumed that there is probable cause. Why do you dismiss that? And I think they are now well educated, Your Honor, because they don't have any problem. But it's good that you ask that question, because that is the misconception. I'm the first one, Your Honor, to support those who are debilitating drug cases. My record as a judge and a fiscal will show otherwise, Your Honor. That's it. Suppose uh, the dismissal was, dismissal was after arraignment. Can it be recalled? What do you mean, Your Honor? Trial has already been? Yes, there has been an arraignment. And what will be and the After dro- that, uh, the judge uh, misconstruing uh, your decision I, in Romilin. Y- Can Honor, it be recalled? Yeah, this, this is the problem, Your Honor. If, if, if the, the limb was already in effect at that time, at that time, Your Honor, and he went to trial, even if there is no probable cause, that will be problematic under, uh, on the part of the judge. Because he could not, he should not have issued a commitment order if from the very beginning there is no probable cause. But if that case uh, proceeded when there was no yet limb, there was no yet limb. Because this one is, this one is prospective. Eh. Procedural law po ito eh. Walang retroactive effect ng procedural law as, as, as a rule eh. Eh bakit niya i-dismiss eh, nag-proceed na ng trial eh. Mali po yung judge. He will have to proceed and then, because that will be unfair to the prosecution eh. You allow him to present evidence and then you say, I do not have probable cause, baka pailan pa ng case yung ano, yung judge eh. The first duty of a judge before he goes, before anything goes to a criminal proceeding, Your Honor, is to determine the existence of probable cause. That is very basic. So why do you have to proceed to trial if you have already, and then arraign him? That supposes that, that is, that may, that may run a probable cause. <laughs> You know, sinasabi ko sometimes that sometimes we have to develop these skills of judges para hindi ho sila nami-misinterpret po eh. We go to another point. In what case in which you were deponente did you demonstrate your judicial philosophy? And what is your justification for your judicial philosophy? Or your, 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 this was sent by one of your colleagues. <laughs> Your Honor, please, uh, yung, yung judicial uh, p- philosophy kasi, marami interpretation siya. Eh. Yung sa akin po, rights of the accused eh, sa akin. Eh. My judicial philosophy is to fair, speedy, speedy, trial, fair, just, and, and uh, impartial, Your Honor. And, the, and my decisions, that says, sabi nga din na, bakit ang mga ka, paramihan ng mga mga decisions mo, criminal procedure and criminal law eh. Kasi ang philosophy ko nga eh, to afford the process to everybody, especially criminal cases. So, I have decided that case of Rolando Corpus. I think if you are not aware of that, that case of Rolando Corpus, that was a vehicle where the, where for the first time the, the legislature, no? legislature amended the revised penal code and changed the amounts where the subject matter, change the amounts, huh? where the subject matter, the penalty are based on the amount. And there are 97 articles in the revised penal code that have been amended. And I am proud to say, Your Honor, that when I see all the, especially the sponsor of that bill, the Senator Dillon, he always remembers that case of Ralong the Corp. It is you why we amended. That's also the case of the probation law, Your Honor. It was my decision in the Makata, the, the Matoka, where the, so the where the Congress amended the law on, 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 on probation. You know, these, these are the things that probably, uh, I don't know, Your Honor, but philosophy, I think uh, we have to get uh, give fair, just, impartial, and speedy resolution of cases. Uh, another question sent in by your, one of your colleagues. For which ponencia? Would you think you could be acknowledged for your intellectual leadership? Nako marami ko eh. To be kasi that I will be, I will be, be ano, binubuhat ko yung sarili ko eh. Bangko ko eh. Mahirap ko yun eh. But I can, I can, uh, I can enumerate some, but there are already many cases, Your Honor. Just one eh. or two, huh? Uh, oh, what's again the question, Your Honor? The, the last one? That would, that will, re- that I will, where well, I will be remembered? Yeah, you could be acknowledged for your intellectual leadership. 
not only leadership, but intellectual leadership. There are many cases in remedial law, in, the, in criminal law, in criminal procedure, in taxation, political, constitutional law, maram, ma, marami po yun eh. But if I will re-enumerate them, baka sabi nila, nag-ayabang ako eh. Sabi ko, I just have a few, I just mentioned some na lang po. That case of Roland Dukopos, I think is one. Although the court was uh, divided, I think that one. The one that uh, I, I append lately, probably, the case of uh, of the retroactive effect of the 10.591, the new law, the case that I brought to the court when the case we already became final, and I convinced the court that it should be reopened, that case of Hernan versus Sandigan Bayan, then I said that 10.591 should be given retroactive effect, and most of those who have been in jail were released because of 10.591, also, also the case of uh, of uh, the uh, the one that I decided I can recall on political law or constitutional law, yeah, the limitation of airtime during election imposed by the Comelec, which was very short, which was a unanimous decision that may also be one. Uh, they always talk kasi, marami po yun. The the other case that when I when I, uh, I, I wrote a uh, decision about, uh, let me see, the tax, marami. Okay. And the one, anyway, the uh, one, the, the you your honor, this is the one. Romi, Romilin, Ro Romilin, and, Romilin, and Romilin, Estipona. Oh. Estipona, Romilin, and even this inmates, the one that I wrote, uh, giving retroactive effect. GCTA. No. GCTA. And there's another one, Your Honor. This will benefit government officials. It was it was merely an unsigned resolution, where a judgment rendered by the Sandigan Bayan, ah, Sandigan Bayan, under under the law or under their procedure, the mode of bringing up a a you know a uh, a decision of conviction in the Sandigan Bayan is through Rule 45. And as we all know, Rule 45 is a discretionary appeal. And I went over some of the cases that we decided that the convicted accused was not given any more a chance to give the comment and therefore reopen the case. Because you do not anymore reopen the case when you say no reversible error and then dismiss. Then I came out with a, with a simple resolution, I brought it to the end bank, that is, this is unfair to government officials. Why? The only forum where a convicted accused in San Dengan Bayan, where he could go to to question the decision, is a Supreme Court lang eh. E sabi ko, mas maganda pa yung ordinary official who is convicted in the, in the RTC for falsification of, or for malversation because he can go to the court of appeals ordinary appeal. And when it is an ordinary appeal, Your Honor, as if there is no decision. Because we'll be reopened as if there is no decision, everything is reviewed. Mas maganda pa yun eh. E kung natalo sa Court of Appeals, pumunta sa Supreme Court, pagkat sa so Rule 45, pwede mo nang discretionary appeal yun. Pwede mo nang i-dismiss yan kung tama ang, tama ang decision ng Court of Appeals eh. Ito sa Sandigan Bayan, salary grades, 26 and above. Governor, Director, Cabinet Members, if they are acquitted po, pupunta sa Supreme Court, we do not any more review. Why? Because the motto of the mode of review is Rule 45, which is discretionary. So I wrote, I wrote then back in the case, it is an unsigned resolution, Your Honor, and they all agreed that if it is a Rule 45, then it should not be dismissed. And then when, when I was appointed as chair of the committee that reviewed the internal rules of Sandigan Bayan, I made it a point that the mode of appeal in case of conviction, uh, conviction of decision of the Sandigan Bayan in its original jurisdiction, then it should be by ordinary appeal. However, decisions of the Sandigan Bayan in the exercise of appellate jurisdiction, then the mode of appeal that will go to the Supreme Court should be Rule 45. And that's what they've been doing. We implemented the rules of the Sandigan Bayan last January, Your Honor. So, ang possibility na ngayon, for ordinary appeal, open at least the convicted official will have all the chance to ventilate his side that he is actually innocent. I-review mo na lahat yun eh. As if there is no more decision eh. 
I think that it is a simple, it is a simple resolution, and I think, I think, Your Honor, that is that is one of the important uh, things that I did. So, Supreme Court, I was able to convince the NBAC. There were some, there were some apprehensions. Yeah, I convinced uh, Chief Justice Chesley Castro that if you want to leave this court, your retirement, you see to it that the internal rules of the Sandigan Bayan will be approved by the NBAC before you retire. Which we did. Yan, yan, yan. Sa tingin ko, one of the things that I did now. Sa tingin ko, it's a simple resolution, but it has a great impact, Your Honor. Should you be appointed as the Supreme Court Justice, Chief Justice, you will automatically be the Chairman of the JBC. Yes. Yes. Do you have any reforms in mind? Regarding JBC. Well, I, I, I told I told the uh, the honourable members a while ago, Your Honour, that you are overburdened with so many applicants. So what do you need? I, actually, that you had to increase the number of personnel. It was uh, front lines, the uh, screening committee, then in the office of the attorney capacity, you have to increase your personnel. And then I do not know how you will be how you will address the problem of interviews because there are too, so many. Applicants that you had to interview. The problem lang kasi po, to me, ah, this is also the problem with the Supreme Court. If we want to add employees, you know, permanent, gag ilalagay mo sa plantilya po, e may harap kumuha ng plantilya sa bargain. So what we have been doing sa Supreme Court, I think we can apply. In the meantime, we can employ contractual or casual employees. I I hope there will be takers to do contractual or casual employees. And ito lang po ang suggestion ko para sa interview di po ho may hirap. I do not know this is what you've been doing because why not require na lang diyan o yung stop po ninyo to make a summary of the applicant. Kasi pag kami, ako mismo, when I received your confidential documents for an applicant for justice, ganun kakapal eh ang binibigay nyo sa amin isa-isa eh. Ang sinasuggest ko lang, why not? We don't want to hide anything. Yeah, but what I'm saying, Your Honor, ito sa RTC ah, RTC, bakit na lang gumawa na lang ng summary yung ano, yung yung mga summary and then if you believe that wala naman problema yun, huwag nang interviewin especially kung first level court pupunta sa second level court or lateral, hindi kung makikita nyo lang na wala masyadong problema, makikita mo naman how long has been there ilan ang dakit nga, nandun na lahat eh kasi I know you have a hard time interviewing it no Aside from that, what provision in the rules do you want to tweak or improve on? Well, the last time that I read your rules is when when I sat as chairman of the 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 chairman of the JBC when we interviewed the applicants for a chief justice in 2012. Meron nakakaroon ng konting ano yun? Amendment. And I was briefed by then Justice Hermosissima. I think he was in charge of the Security Committee. And then thereafter, there were several several amendments during the time of, I think, Chief Justice Sereno. No, so I will have to read again the rules, your order, and then then I'll ask you anyway. Any suggestion that that. I want I want to suggest will be brought to you for approval because as you as we as I said I if I will become a Supreme Court and then I will have JBC I come from a different world and I'm becoming a different world so I have to listen from you. Justice, my time is up. I know I have several questions but I just give you this opportunity to. Say something that which was not covered, which which you want to say. Well, uh, Your Honor, I'm not I'm not comparing myself with the others because uh, the other three are also qualified, you know, Your Honor. And before before I, anything else, uh, anything else, I had to thank the members of the committee for allowing me to be the first one to be interviewed, because the original schedule was when the, when I was informed of alphabetical order, I should have been interviewed in the afternoon. But I requested that I should be interviewed if I could be interviewed first in the morning because I have a Metro Bank lecture in the afternoon, and I was coming from from South Africa. So I thank you for that for accommodating me as the first 
interviewing. Then I will go back to my first, my, my first statement. I'm not saying, I'm not competing with the other applicants. They may also be qualified. You know, not. We have our own qualities. I have my own qualities. It's up to you to judge us. But what I can only say, you know, sometimes sentimental ako eh. I'm sentimental, you know. If I remember what I have experienced since I started working, you know, I hear up eh. <laughs> And I think, I think it is a I think I deserve to be hit justice because I worked all these years. I worked very hard all these years. I'm not a top notch yet. I'm not an honor student. Because that's what they say. Din man ako top notch yet, din man ako honor, why should I do that? But I, I think I was able to compensate with the work that I've done as a public prosecutor, as a judge, as an associate justice of the Sandigan Bayan, as a presiding justice, as a justice of the Supreme Court, as a lecturer, and the chairman of several committees and members of several committees, I think they are more than enough to compensate of what they say that I do not deserve because I'm not a top notch here or I'm not an honest. I hope you have to take those into consideration. That there is hope for an individual like me. <laughs> Sorry. Medyo emotion. That, that's me, your own. Hindi ako harukan. That's me. So, thank you very much. That's all what I can say. Nanon po ako. That's, that's, that's me. I'm not harukan. Masamang pakinggan. Thank you very much, Justice. And I thank you also for bringing out that... Uh, thank you also for bringing that out. Thank you also for bringing that out. Because... Uh, because... I had the opportunity to explain who really I am. Thank you. Thank you po. Very much. Sorry po. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Justice Peralta. We wish you all the best. Thank you.